Hello YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you my streetlight collection so far. Now I've acquired one new streetlight in my collection, but I actually bought this from Offer Up. But it actually still came from the city of Phoenix, but where I live is the city of Avondale, but it's still really close. And I will go a little in depth with some of the models for you lighting enthusiasts out there to write that down your records or go eBay searching or go searching in your city for street lights since we all know high pressure sodium lights are on their way out. So the last street light video I made was about this guy right here. The American Electric Acuity brand Autobahn model. That's the model brand of that's the model of this light. Autobahn. The survivor of all of them that got knocked off a 40 foot pole. Still works by the way. And I still have the stand and I put it in its area. This one I got off the power pole. Really close to my house. Is a M400 A2 F Co. It's early actually because the early models had these little vents on the bottom. The newer ones still look exactly like this except they don't have these vents. Now I actually bypassed the uh, photo cell. So these are not active because obviously I don't want to shut it off. Now this is a new one here. And I have to say this is pretty massive. This is a Hub L. Model RLC, and I know a lot of you guys out there really like that model, especially Hub L lighting. This was the one I bought on offer of. It is a 250 watt, but judging by that sticker right there, and the ballast in this thing is massive. That is the most massive ballast I've ever carried, and it weighs like 15 pounds more than this light. And this is also a 250 watt fixture. I don't really know the background about this. I just knew, I told the seller, you say it came from a residential area. I think probably close to a residential area because they do not use 250 watt lights in a residential area. Uh, as people will be complaining, it's too bright. Now that little orange thing in there that you see, and this one also has it, is a rubber gasket. And those are still good. <laughs> Now this is the un unfortunate thing about this, is the paint came off here. It came like that to me, but it's nothing bad. It looks like acid, like an acid thing, but really it was just laying in the dirt because it was outside in someone's yard, in this seller's yard. But this one actually doesn't, didn't have a photo, so it actually had a cap. So it must have been controlled somewhere else. Like it could have been up on a, on a traffic light pole. Where they have all the traffic lights and whatnot, because usually some of them actually have a shorting cap. But this one actually didn't have that. It's massive. And then over here, I don't mind the poster too, in case some of you know. I actually just moved this one over here today. This is the other GE, I believe, MAC. Which I, I actually could show you. I don't really know the model really well, but that one's actually the one I got for my street. It's M2AC. So that's the model of that light and that light. This one I got from a couple blocks down from my house. And this one I got from the next street over from those houses over there. Right on the other side of the houses across the street is another street over. That's where I got that light on the very end. It's also 100 watts, and of course that's pretty typical for a residential area. Made by a wonderful GE. Now I actually don't have high pressure sodium bulbs in these, but I still have the original bulbs and I'm going to save them because high pressure sodium bulbs are probably going to start getting hard to find. Maybe not now, but probably in five years from now. Maybe mandates will come in saying that we can't make these bulbs anymore because they're not efficient which is a stupid light bulb law in my opinion but i actually retrofitted these myself actually this one's a phillips filament led light about probably like 3.5 watts instead of 100 watts now actually and if you see this here this is actually fire resistant pvc pipe 
that I actually found laying on the curb one day, and I took it because it's free. And also, I don't have to spend money on materials. And then the stand is actually made out of old pallet wood that's actually pretty good, made out of pine. That I put together, that I put together, and this I put together. This is all with PVC fire resistant pipe that's used for a fire riser system in a residential home. And then those two of course are fan stands. If you ever get if you ever start getting to street lights, you might want to find a fan or something with a stand like this. Probably that. This will also work too. But if you have really fluffy carpets, you may want to put something underneath this so it won't fall forward. So yeah. And you can put LED bulbs in it. And if you're wondering how I put regular house bulbs in these, I'll unscrew this. I know this bulb's not super hot. It's LED. I actually got this little adapter. And I got it from Amazon. But see what it does. Is it converts a traditional base, which is an E27, to an E40 base. So I could actually shove it in that large socket there. And actually, you buy, I actually too bypass the ballast. And most people say, Get, you should have removed the ballast. I like to keep the ballast in all of these, but they're not in use. But I feel like keeping all the original hardware in them is good in case I ever want to convert them back to high pressure sodium in the future. No, I could still, I could keep it high pressure sodium if I want to. I could revert back to it if I want to. And I could keep switching back and forth every once in a while. <laughs> See, just like that. Easy as that. Uh... And then just clip this back in. Now, I am thinking about doing something a little crazy and unusual with these. If some of you guys ever heard about Phillips Hue bulbs, I want to stick Phillips Hue bulbs in these guys. Not this one, obviously, because this one's just straight up LEDs in there. And that, because this one's also the E40. This one's a different LED bulb made by, I believe, Fuelt Electric. However you call it. Stick in all of these. Now, if you ever find one of these new lights on the curb I'm just gonna give you a tip on that but before anything this is the city of Phoenix here and they actually provide an LED project map which is nice because I can see which lights have been done now it has a, it doesn't update right away but it shows you every single light pole on this Shows you every single light pole around here. As you can see, this is a main street right here. And the white means it hasn't been touched yet. Could have been touched, but that it doesn't like I said, it doesn't update right away. They include all the traffic lights. But see all this green? This is like in residential business park areas. Those have been re converted over to LED, like obviously been replaced. As you can see. Now, if you ever find one of these LEDs on the curb, like, if you find on the side of the road knocked off a pole after a car accident scene, you may want to watch out with photocells, because some photocells are smart. This one's actually just a dumb photocell, luckily. But I've actually seen some of the smart photocells installed in different cities around me. But, this is a smart photocell here. They're going to most likely install this type of photo cell. The way you tell that this is a smart photo cell from the ground up is if it has a dome looking top. The cell has a dome looking top. This is made by DTL, the same brand that also made that photo cell. Which, it's also right here too. That's the photo cell my city put on all the lights. They didn't even put the smart ones, which is good, because if I ever find one of these on the curb, I could just pick it up and not have to worry about it. 
which is that guy right there. And actually, this one's not even in use. I actually bypassed it. And I actually can actually dim this. And you could actually dim this model. This model will allow you to dim. There's two wires that you could put some sort of like a control on you could dim it a certain amount but this one's full blown dim see these two wires if I short these two together this is a 0 to 10 volt dimming that this driver actually provides and I'm gonna actually just untwist it and no it won't shock me I'll twist it and you can see it just got way brighter And if I short them back together, and I'll try to do it single-handed here. As you can see. It went back to dim. And this is, I use these lights every day. Just letting you guys know. I use these every day. I actually got them hooked up to this switch here. So if I turn off this switch. They all turn off. How creative is that? I actually hooked it to that one switch. Now if some of your homes have an outlet that's upside down, this one used to be one of those outlets that was upside down, but there was another wire coming from that outlet to one behind my dresser here. And what I did is I switched a couple wires around to make that one run non-stop and make that one switched. And my ceiling fan light is independent from everything else, but when I flip this switch back on Just like that I don't have to unplug anything I bypassed all the photo cells I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm gonna try to get Philips Hue bulbs try when it's more closer to Black Friday Cause I would think that's it. That'd be the most cool and odd thing to do with streetlights is stick Philips Hue bulbs in it. It's possible, but be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for any future videos that I will be uploading.